how you doing? Welcome back to my channel. I'm very excited. I am so excited. Ah, <laughs> I've just been so excited to share my top 10 albums of 2023 and we're finally here. I'm very excited. I don't know if I said that, but I'm very, very excited. So I'm just, I'm not going to hang about. I'm just going to get straight into this because I don't know if I've mentioned this. I'm very excited. My top 10 metal albums of 2023. I'm starting off with number 10, released on the 27th of October via Century Media Records. It's the fifth studio album from Wayfarer with American Gothic. And this is atmospheric Western black metal from Colorado. And this is just an absolutely stunning record. Drawing on elements from black metal, gothic country and Americana, this record is just full of really dark, haunting melodies. Powerful, powerful riffage and really catchy rhythm. It's epically atmospheric and really dense with gothic darkness and western themes and all of these elements rolled into one have created a really unique sound. It's polished but brutally raw and absolutely gorgeous. Wayfarer have really developed a unique sound incorporating black metal, Americana and country vibes with a little tinge of gothicness in there as well and it's just an absolutely stunning record. The record really does take you on an epic journey full of blood, dust and gunpowder and the combination of really dark demonic gutturals and clean melodies are just absolutely amazing. My favourite track of this record is definitely The Cattle Thief. It's a nine minute long track so it is quite a long sprawling track but it takes you on a journey and it really draws you in and it builds absolutely beautifully with loads of different layers the guitar work in this is absolutely amazing and it just has this very dark, gothic, sinister vibe to it and I absolutely loved it. I loved the entire record and that's why it's in my top 10. So coming in at number 10, I have Wayfarer with American Gothic. Now coming in at number 9, I have a record that I haven't seen very many people talk about. And that absolutely astounds me because I loved this record and it needs more love and that's why I'm recommending it for number 9 today. Released on the 21st of July via MMD Records, it's the third studio album from Nuclear Winter with Seagrave and this is industrial melodic death metal from a one-man band. This one guy does absolutely everything. He's an everythingist, if, if that's a term, and he does an amazing job with this record and I loved it. Now even though this has been classed as an industrial melodic death metal record, there's definitely elements of black metal and a little bit of prog in there as well. This record is really grand, it's really opulent, it's grandiose, it's epic and atmospheric. Lots of synthy goodness, electronica, blast beats, epic guitar riffage, the solos in this are absolutely insane and it absolutely astounds me that one guy has done absolutely everything in this record. You've got your orchestral elements, you've got your chanting choruses, you've got your choir elements and lots of really cool groove-laden stomps. Soaring solos and an epic mix of deep demonic guttural vocals and clean soaring melodic vocals and it's just an absolutely amazing record. Stunning, massive soundscapes, really epically precise guitars. It's really aggressive but it's quite operatic in nature as well. Basically, if you're going to go to the opera to see a heavy metal performance, this is it. This is it. It's that grand, that opulent and grandiose. I absolutely adored this. It basically sounds like a Flesh God Apocalypse, Devin Townsend and Gary Newman all got together to form an industrial melodic death metal band. This is the result and it's amazing. Thy Shadows Fall is definitely a standout track for me. It's got that really cool, groovy, stompy mid-tempo edge to it and it builds and it builds and it's a really dynamic track with loads of different layers to it and I absolutely adored this. So please check this out if you haven't already done so. If you like your metal, really grand and opulent, really dramatic with lots of synthy goodness, guttural vocals and epic guitars, this one check it out. So coming in at number nine, I have Nuclear Winter with Seagrave. Coming in at number eight is a band that I have absolutely adored for many, many, many years now. So it comes as no surprise that these guys would be in my top 10. 
Released way back on the 24th of February via Century Media Records, it's the ninth studio album from Insomnium with Anno 1696. Huge, grandiose, melancholic storytelling with themes centred around Europe's dark history when it comes to witch hunts and the associated witch trials which were rather gruesome. This record is absolutely gorgeous but it has a raw energy about it. It has a rougher edge and an absolutely blistering nature. Crushing guitar riffs, really epic orchestral moments, stunning vocal harmonies with the soaring clean melodies and the deep demonic gutturals. This record is just an absolute work of art and a huge standout moment for me is definitely White Christ which features vocals from Sacus Tallis of Rotten Christ. So that's two of my favourite bands of all time coming together to create an absolute masterpiece of a track and this entire record is just absolutely stunning. I loved this and it should be coming as no surprise that this would be in my top 10. But number eight, I have Insomnium with Anno 1696. Okay, coming in at number seven, I have a debut album that absolutely ruined my list pretty late on in the year, I'm gonna be honest, but I absolutely adore this record. Released on the 29th of September via Magical Records and somebody in my comment section, I can't remember which video it was of my top 40 albums of the year that I've done so far, but somebody in my comment section did say, I'm just waiting for this album to appear and you were absolutely right. Like I said, released on the 29th of September via Magical Records, I have Moonlight Sorcery with Horned Lord of the Thorned Castle. And that is really difficult for me to say. I don't know why I found that so hard. I'm not going to try and say it again because I will mess it up. Raw and atmospheric black metal with huge addictive melodies and catchy hooks. Epically shredding guitars, a lot of really cool synthy moments. It's really dramatic with thunderous blast beats and rasping demonic vocals. Now the guitar work in this record is absolutely immense and muscular. The solos are absolutely incredible. The fact that this is a debut album is just absolutely insane to me. The musicianship from this trio is just absolutely amazing. And the energy behind this record is so powerful to say the least. This is a really cool record. It goes straight for the jugular. It's really melodic, but heavily brutal at the same time. It's just a stunningly addictive and really dramatic black metal masterpiece. And the records just get stronger and stronger as it progresses. Into the Silvery Shadows of Night is definitely a standout moment for me on this record. You know, you've got your sinister spoken word elements, you've got really heavy, dense, synthy atmosphere. It's really sprawling, grandiose and heavy and just in your face. I absolutely loved it. But yes, whoever it was that commented on one of my last videos about this popping up somewhere, you were absolutely right. Coming in at number seven, I have Moonlight Sorcery with Horned Lord of the Thorned Castle. Okay, coming in at number six, released way back on the 17th of February via Peaceful Records, I have Hellripper with Warlock's Grim and Withered Hags. Scottish blackened speed metal. I love this record so much. This is inspired by the darker side of Scottish history and folklore and trust me, as a Scottish native, we have a lot of that. And the record itself is actually named after a line that's in a very famous Rabbi Burns poem called Address to the Deal. Frantic riffing madness fo focused on speed, ferocity and ridiculously catchy rhythm. Since Hellripper's formation in 2015, they've just went from strength to strength. And again, the fact that this is a one-man solo project absolutely blows my mind. The talent that comes from these solo projects is absolutely unreal. And this one is no exception whatsoever. This record goes straight for the jugular from the get-go with sheer intensity and frantic, shreddy guitar wizardry. The guitar work in this record is pristine, it's ferocious, it's incredibly fast, really, really catchy, very, very intricate, and I love it. It is so catchy and so fun to listen to, it's ridiculous. My favourite track of this record is definitely the title track, Warlock's Grim and Withered Hags. It's got some really cool chuggy guitars in this. Roaring chants and devastatingly commanding presence. It's very groove laden and the use of bagpipes in this track is really, really cool as well. It's not jarring and adds a whole new dimension to the track too. So coming in at number six, I have Hellripper with Warlock's Grim and Withered Hags. 
Coming in at number five, and again, this record was very late on in the day and it completely ruined my list, but I had to have it in my top 10. I absolutely adore this record so much. It always puts me in a great mood when I'm listening to it and I just absolutely love it. So released on the 13th of October via Van Records, it's the fourth studio album from Sulphur Aeon with Seven Crowns and Seven Seals. Blackened Death Metal with HP Lovecraft themes. Now if anybody's been keeping an eye on my History of Metals mini-series that I've got on this channel, I'm currently going through Niles Amongst the Catacombs of Nefran Ka, which has a lot of HP Lovecraft themes about it as well. I love HP Lovecraft. I absolutely adore his universe and his stories. So when I discovered that Sulphur Aeon had released a new record, I was all over it. I was all over that and it did not disappoint whatsoever. Hugely atmospheric and even though it is classed as a blackened death metal record, there are a few elements of gothic touches throughout the record too. Dense rhythm, really ferocious commanding atmosphere, deep demonic gutturals and soaring cleans. The energy is raw, it's gorgeous but it's incredibly brutal. Blistering blast beats and really savage dark aggression and the stylistic approach to their musicianship really brings the creatures of HP Lovecraft's universe alive and it really symbolises the terror and the insanity that these creatures bring in a whole new level musically and it's just absolutely amazing. Amazing. My favourite track of this record is definitely the title track, Seven Crowns and Seven Seals. It has a really heavy synthy presence and it has a very slow plodding affair that really does build up until it absolutely explodes into grandiosity. There's a lot of gothic majesty about this particular track but there's also the brutal death metal, the black metal elements, the really catchy melodies and the dark opulent sinister energy it is just absolutely amazing. I love this record so much. So coming in at number five, I have Sulphur Aeon with Seven Crowns and Seven Seals. Okay, so coming in at number four, another gorgeous record. This was released on the 28th of April via Prosthetic Records, and that's Fires in the Distance with Air Not Meant For Us. Melodic death doom metal at its absolute finest. Beautiful piano pieces, soaring soundscapes, choir and orchestral elements, blistering blast beats and epically chugging guitars. This record is a soaring soundscape to say the least. Especially considering the very first track is 11 minutes long, it really does take you on a very opulent, grandiose journey. It's quite sorrowful without it being too depressing. It is absolutely gorgeous. The layers are really intricate and beautifully executed, but don't let that fool you. It's every bit as ferocious and heavy and brutal as it is beautiful. This was an absolutely stunning work of art. Plus they also released an instrumental version without the guttural vocals for this record as well. And that's just every bit as beautiful as well. So definitely check out both of them, the instrumental version and the full version with the guttural vocals, but I absolutely fell in love with this record and the artwork is absolutely stunning too. A standout moment for me on this record is definitely Wisdom of Falling Leaves. It's very grandiose, opulent, very atmospheric and it's just absolutely stunning. But in, like I said, incredibly heavy. The guitar riffs in this are just out of this world. Loved this. Obviously, I love all of the albums in my top 40 albums of the year because they wouldn't be in my list otherwise. But this was just, it blew me away. It absolutely blew me away. So coming in at number four, I have Fires in the Distance with Air Not Meant For Us. Okay, coming in at number three, I have another debut album and this was absolutely amazing. Not only is it a debut album, it's also a self-released album. So there's no record label involved with this record whatsoever and I instantly fell in love with this. Released on the 22nd of September, I have Anima Heretici with Descended From The Mountains. A densely brutal, atmospheric, grandiose, blistering soundscape of pummeling thunderous drums, epic lightning speed riffage, beautiful orchestration and gorgeous intensity. There is just something incredibly captivating about this record. But not only is it gorgeous and incredibly captivating, this devastates. It is so heavy, it shouldn't be allowed. I loved this. And it just has multiple layers of crushing attitude, really dense atmosphere and lightning speed riffage. Plus the guttural vocals in this are absolutely stunning. Plus look at that artwork. 
I love this artwork. I would have this artwork on my wall. I love it. A definite standout moment for me on this record is Sumerian Darkness. It kind of opens with an orchestral violin theme. Lots of string instruments that really builds that very grandiose, opulent atmosphere before it completely wipes your face off with blistering blast beats. Ethereal choir elements and the demonic roar that just rips this track apart right at the very beginning is astounding. It just knocked me flying and I loved it. So coming in at number three, I have Anima Heretici with Descended from the Mountains. Okay, coming in at number two, again, this is a band that I absolutely adore and I will sing their praises at any given opportunity that I can. Released on the 18th of August via Seek and Strike, it's the sixth studio album from Orbit Culture with Descent. Opulent theatrics, stunning dramatic soundscapes, and really dense dynamic flair that would get the approval of Hans Zimmer. That's the kind of opulent kind of theatrical film score soundscape that we're talking about here. But if you take Hans Zimmer's orchestral epic movie soundscape kind of orchestral stuff and you add epic riffs, blast beats, guttural vocals and it's just absolutely incredible. The breakdowns in this are absolutely ridiculous and the contrast between the guttural demonic vocals and the soaring melodic cleans really balance out and adds a whole other layer of atmosphere to the record and it really keeps you interested as well throughout the entire record. Compelling artistry, really huge symphonic moments. It's a perfect combination of thrashy elements with modern metal and melodic death metal. It's ridiculously catchy and it just hooks you in. Orbit Culture have always had this uncanny ability to take you on an epic journey with their tracks and just when you think a track is going to end, it explodes again and it just keeps getting better and better. I loved this record so much. I had the opportunity to see them live earlier on this year when they were touring with Trivium and honestly if you ever get the chance to go and see them live, do it, grab it. I fully believe that these guys are going to be the next huge metal band of our generation. Love them. Love them so much. So coming in at number two, I have Orbit Culture with Descent. Oh, exciting times now. Exciting times. I'm about to reveal my number one, my most favourite album of 2023. This album, it, it terrified me. It absolutely terrified me. I was so scared when I was listening to this entire record because it made me feel things. I don't like feeling things at all. <laughs> That's a different story entirely. But I have to say, just before I reveal my top album of 2023, there have been so many amazing records that have been released this year. So the fact that I've managed to narrow it down to 40 is absolutely mind-boggling to me because there's been loads and next year is looking to be just amazing. I don't know how we all do it but I absolutely love seeing everybody's lists. I love it when you share your list in the comment section, I love it when you message me on social media, when you get all excited, when you either discover something from my channel or you recommend something for yourself. It's just I love it, I love this time of year and the fact that we have access to all of this really cool metal that's getting released almost instantly. Love it. I just, it's what a time to be alive. I absolutely adore this. But anyway, I'm going to stop ranting now. Very excited. But coming in at number one, my all-time favourite top metal album of 2023. It's a self-released record released on the 7th of July, the second studio album from Black Braid with Black Braid 2. Now, like I said, this album absolutely terrified me. I fell in love with this album so much that I lost my shit for lack of a better term. I absolutely adore this. It terrified me but it drew me in and I cannot stop listening to this record. So this is a really epic fusion between traditional Native American orchestration and instrumentation with classic Scandinavian black metal. This record blew my wee face off. It really did. I love Black Braid anyway. The last album that Black Braid released last year did make it into my top 40 as well. But this one, Black Braid 2, absolutely surpassed that and then some. I cannot believe how amazing this record is. It packs a monumental punch with sheer aggression and absolutely gorgeous instrumentation. The windpipes, the flutes, the traditional acoustic elements adds a whole other layer of 
epic, dense atmosphere. But it's also a near constant barrage of blistering black metal blast beats and epic, intense lightning speed riffage. Now the traditional elements of the windpipes and the acoustic moments really do transport you to another landscape and you basically just escape into the wilderness. And there's a sense of calm that comes over me when I listen to this record, despite how brutal and intense and ferocious it is, there is something quite calming about it as well. And the thing with this record is, it progressively gets stronger and stronger the more you listen to it. Throughout the entire record, it doesn't waver at all. There's no weak moments whatsoever. Even the orchestral moments, the instrumentations that break up the tracks, are absolutely phenomenal. I had the opportunity to see Black Braid when they played at Hellfest in France this year and it was honestly one of the best shows I've ever seen. If you ever get the chance to see Black Braid live, do it, grab it, another epic solo project. These solo projects are just absolutely insane to me but this one is my all-time favourite and I cannot wait to see what Black Braid come out with next. My favourite track of this record is definitely Twilight Hymn of Ancient Blood. It's a slow burner and it gradually builds and builds and builds with different layers of opulent grandiosity, ferocity and intense aggression. And then it just explodes. And the solo in that track knocks me off my feet, just jaw dropped, just stunned absolutely stunned by this but yes coming in at number one my top album of 2023 i have black braid with black braid 2. and that is the conclusion to my top 40 albums of 2023 if you haven't seen my other three videos for this series they are in the same playlist as this one so go and check out the other albums that I've been recommending in my top 40 albums of this year. Let me know what you think of the records that I've spoken about today. I absolutely adore every single one of them and they are a fantastic representation of my particular style of metal that I absolutely love. My style can be a little bit all over the place but this is basically what I absolutely love the most about metal. Again, if you could like, share and subscribe, I really do appreciate your support as always. Feel free to share your own list in the comment section. I absolutely love it when you guys share your music recommendations and I will see you very soon in my next video.